this is a time to choose a side. If Bernie Sanders wants to side with the terrorists, that's so be it. And if other Democrats want to do that, it's on them. But I'm telling you, I, I pray and hope and expect that most of the members of the House of both parties and the Senate will join us for this historic address. You just heard House Speaker Mike Johnson accuse Bernie Sanders of siding with terrorists because he's going to boycott Benjamin Netanyahu's upcoming speech to a joint session of Congress, which is really ironic when you think about it, because this self-proclaimed pro-life Christian, he's the one who's siding with the war criminal bombing babies in Gaza. But that's not terrorism, apparently. Bombing churches and mosques, hospitals, refugee camps, universities and schools, that's not terrorism. In fact, if you don't support those war crimes, you're the one who's somehow a terrorist. It's very Orwellian logic, isn't it? Now, to be clear, Mike Johnson is not alone. Netanyahu was invited to Congress by Mitch McConnell, as well as Democratic leadership, which includes Hakeem Jeffries, of course, and even Chuck Schumer, who just called for new elections in Israel in March and called Netanyahu an obstacle to peace. And Netanyahu proved Schumer right by rejecting multiple ceasefire deals and admitting that they won't end the bloodshed even if they get a deal freeing the hostages. But how does Schumer respond? by inviting that obstacle to peace to Congress to speak. Amazing. But if you're wondering why Chuck Schumer would contradict himself just a couple of months later, well, it's because he's been bought off by groups like AIPAC. And if you're curious as to how much money he and Hakeem Jeffries took from them, well, enough to subject themselves to this. I know you're probably thinking how culty it looks for our leaders to be pledging fealty to a foreign government doing a genocide with some weird ass chant, but I promise you, this isn't a cult. They just want the gravy train to keep rolling in. It's as simple as that. They would literally let Netanyahu piss in their mouths if AIPAC told them to let him do it. That's how beholden they are to these lobbying groups. Chuck Schumer and Hakeem Jeffries have taken more than a million dollars in money from the Israel lobby, and Mike Johnson and Joni Ernst, who you also saw there, have taken hundreds of thousands of dollars from the Israel lobby. So, of course, they're going to sing the praises of a foreign government who's bankrolling them because... That's what politicians in America do. But all of this APAC money doesn't just buy complicity with Israel's genocide. It also buys Israel cover as well. And I say this because the House just voted to sanction the International Criminal Court over their pursuit of arrest warrants for Netanyahu and Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant. And this includes all 205 Republicans who voted and 42 Democrats who joined them, which includes the likes of indicted corrupt Congressman Henry Cuellar, who Pelosi, by the way, endorsed over his progressive challenger in 2022. There's also Ruben Gallego, who is running for the Senate to replace Kirsten Sinema in Arizona and has been trying to convince all of us that he'd be better than her, but mm, I'd say this is a pretty big red flag if you ask me. Of course, there's Jared Moskowitz, who calls out Republicans fairly regularly who he thinks are doing the bidding of Russia, but here he is doing the bidding of Israel like a good little stooge. There's also Richie Torres, who is supposed to be representing the poorest district in the country, but is instead spending most of his time defending defending Israel's war crimes and blocking anyone on Twitter who calls him out for his traitorous behavior. And of course, there is Alyssa Slotkin, who is the Senate candidate for Democrats in the state of Michigan. Very smart politics there, Alyssa. And unsurprisingly, there's Debbie Wasserman Schultz, who's an actual demon, so there's really no surprise. But she is being primaried right now by Jen Perlman. So if you live in that district, vote for Jen, who doesn't support genocide, unlike Debbie. There's more, but you get the point. Our government wants to destroy international law all at the behest of one foreign government that happens to be doing a genocide and is also funding their campaigns. Odds are some of those same Democrats who voted to sanction the ICC also applauded the ICC when they took action against Russia. But now that the ICC is pursuing a government that they're being funded by, well, they've changed their tune. And to be clear, these lawmakers aren't just bought off by the Israel lobby. They're bought off by other special interests, too, like most politicians. For example, Trump vetoed a bipartisan bill that would have ended U.S. complicity with Saudi Arabia's genocide in Yemen. Why? Well, because... Saudi lobbying and investments that he had in Saudi Arabia. In other words, they buttered him up real good and he did their bidding. But the problem is so much bigger than just foreign influence, right? That is a problem, but politicians have also been bought off by 
other industries, the healthcare industry, the pharmaceutical industry, and virtually every industry in existence. I mean, we call Debbie Wasserman Schultz debt trap Debbie since she's beholden to predatory payday lenders that take advantage of poor people. I mean, this is just how our government works since the Supreme Court effectively legalized bribery. But apparently, American politicians aren't satisfied just supporting genocide and defending Netanyahu from accountability for doing said genocide because they now want him to address our Congress so they can fangirl over him in person, I guess. I mean, there aren't enough words to describe how loathsome these politicians are. They are truly some of the most spineless and vile Cretans humanity has ever produced. But thankfully, there are some politicians who are willing to call this out. Of course, it's the usual suspects. Bernie Sanders is one of them. And he was accused of siding with terrorists for not supporting Netanyahu's terrorism as you saw. Now, Mike Johnson repeated that same sentiment in an interview that he did on Fox News, but this is how Bernie Sanders decided to respond when he addressed that slander on the Senate floor. Netanyahu and his extremist government have killed more than 36,000 Palestinians and wounded over 82,000. That is 5% of the population of Gaza. Netanyahu's war machine has driven 1.7 million people from their homes, 75% of the population of Gaza. Netanyahu's government has damaged or destroyed over 60% of the housing in Gaza, leaving more than 1 million people permanently homeless. Mr. Netanyahu and his government have annihilated Gaza's health care system and I have talked to doctors, American doctors who have been there, who talk about the systematic destruction of their health care system. 26 hospitals have been knocked out of service, and more than 400 health care workers have been killed. Every single one of these 12 universities has been bombed, as have 56 schools. His government according to virtually every humanitarian organization functioning in Gaza, has blocked, intentionally blocked, humanitarian aid. That is food, water, medical supplies from reaching the desperate people of Gaza, which has created, on top of everything else, the conditions for starvation and famine. You know, Mr. President, we, as we all know, are in campaign season. And I would say to Speaker Johnson that when you attend your fundraising dinners with your billionaire friends and you eat your fine steaks and your lobsters and your other wonderful food, please remember these pictures from Gaza are these children and thousands more are the direct result of Netanyahu's policies. Netanyahu, the man, Speaker Johnson, has invited to address Congress. No, Mr. President, I will not be in attendance for that speech. Yeah. Great speech. And there's a lot more there, but I had to cut it so that way you can kind of get the crux of it. I'll link to it down below. Now, as you saw, I had to blur the images that were showed of children that were literally starved to death because YouTube has been age restricting videos showing those images. But I mean, if those images are too gruesome for YouTube, a large corporation, why is it not too gruesome for American lawmakers? Why hasn't those same images gotten them to take action and say, enough is enough. We can't continue to support this. They don't care at all. They're perfectly fine with it. In fact, if you criticize Israel for starving those babies to death, you're apparently siding with terrorists. But they obviously have it backwards. If you support and defend the war criminal who did that to those children, you are the one supporting terrorism. Now, in an interview with Chris Hayes, Bernie Sanders addressed Mike Johnson's comments again, this time more directly, and here's what he had to say. What do you say to being accused of siding with the terrorists if you do not adjoin? Uh, I mean, it is a disgusting lie. He said it yesterday. He said it again today. And I guess, you know, if you are part of the MAGA group, right-wing Republicans, big lies 
uh, what you do, you just say lies over and over again and you hope people uh, believe them. Uh, as I have said from literally day one of this terrible war, uh, what Hamas did is atrocious. Uh, Sinwa, the leader of Hamas, is a war criminal. He should be yes. in jail. Uh, and Israel had every right in the world to defend itself uh, against uh, Hamas. But what, you know, what uh, Johnson is doing is what right wing people always do. If you back in the day, if you stood up for civil rights or social justice, they called you a communist. If you are prepared uh, to take on Netanyahu's, Netanyahu's outrageous war against the Palestinian people, I suppose now they claim that you're sympathetic to terrorism. It is a lie. Uh, and I really uh, am not happy with what he is saying. And let's be real, we all know that Mike Johnson would call Bernie Sanders anti-Semitic because that's been the go-to smear for anyone who dares to criticize Israel. But you can't really do that when the person criticizing Israel is a Jewish man who has family that literally died in the Holocaust. I mean, that still hasn't stopped other Zionists from accusing Bernie Sanders of being a self-hating Jew. But that's not really a can of worms that Mike Johnson, of all people, wants to open up, considering his evangelical beliefs that are deeply anti-Semitic if you look into it. But like it or not, Netanyahu is going to be addressing a joint session of Congress, which is despicable. But the question now becomes, how should lawmakers respond? And the obvious thing would be to boycott it. That's what Bernie Sanders is doing. And as Axios reports, a large boycott is expected along with disruptions outside of the event. But as Mark Pocan put it, quote, boycotting means smiling GOP staff faces will take our seats. I think we need to see how to best highlight the real Netanyahu than just not showing up to begin with. In other words, he's saying that maybe showing up and making a statement could actually be more effective than not showing up. And I think this is actually really interesting. If enough Democrats actually coordinate some kind of a campaign and wear shirts with a message and bring signs and take turns shouting him down to the point where he's not able to get a single fucking word out, that could make a bigger statement than just not showing up. And if you think that they won't be allowed to shout down Netanyahu, remember that at State of the Unions every single year, the president of the United States is shouted down. It happened just this last time. So, of course, American lawmakers will be able to shout down some foreign war criminal in their own fucking Congress. The matter of will they do it or not is what we have to discuss and how they do it, I think, is important. They do need to deliberate and actually coordinate a plan, something to make it effective. Otherwise, if you just have a couple of people yelling here and there, they're not going to get the message across. And if they're going to just sit there in silence with an angry face, you might as well just not show up because that's a tacit endorsement of his presence there in the first place. But if you're going to be there, make it count. Be loud and shout down this murderous monster until your voice gives out and do not stop shouting. That, I think, really could make a difference. The question is, will they do that and will enough of them do that to make it matter? We'll have to wait and see. You know, I'm not sure how it's going to go, but if they play their cards right, I think that the anti-genocide Democrats like Rashida Tlaib and Cori Bush have a chance to make a really powerful statement to the world. So I do hope that they come up with something. But I mean, if they just want to boycott it, I respect that as well, because I think that whatever they do, they have to do something to make a statement because Benjamin Netanyahu deserves the utmost disrespect and he should be arrested the moment he sets foot on U.S. soil. But instead, politicians are going to line up to fillet him and tell him how good his genocide is. And that is just so nauseating to me. Right. If he's going to address Congress, though, the few members of Congress who actually oppose his genocide should make him regret that decision.